So I'm going to start this side off by disassembling the air duct so it gives us some room to work in. This isn't too bad. But we got to definitely unhook that throttle body. I just don't see any other way being that, you know, those boots are sealed pretty good and I don't want to separate the boot. Just trying to not have to do this. This is like a five, seven minute job, so. I would just take the air tube out in general because that's what I'm going to end up doing here and leaving the mass airflow sensor, which is right here. I'm going to leave that intact. All right, just push these off the side, leave them hooked up so you can break that connection free right here. We'll leave that off to the side. All right, so our next animal to attack is going to be... We do have an attachment here, or I could just break this loose. This isn't too bad to get to. This one's a little trickier. All right, so I'm going to push that off to the side because I don't want to undo that clip. All right, swiggle that up. All right, so I'm going to undo this bolt now. There's quite a bit of uh, stuff to get to that number two spark plug. All right, so grab that one by hand. Put that in your magnetic tray. I'm trying to be as soft as I can. This thing is not just going to give it up that easy. Try to remove this as a complete assembly just to make it easier, but it don't look like it wants to move it away. Well, maybe it does. Well, I guess good and bad of complete assembly. So this is the air intake tube assembly. Air tube there, vacuum tube there, PCB breather there, air diffuser. Yeah, interesting little device. If you ever get a bill for this and it's really high for any type of work, just remember how labor intensive it is. All right, next let's uh. We're going to break loose our problem. Removing the throttle body, it kind of ran into a bind. These are Allen head bolts. And um, I cannot find my normal things because Chevy brakes use these, but I'm having to use an Allen key. Which is not the smartest thing on the planet. Go down to Harbor Freight and get yourself a uh, socket for this. This one's a little bit tougher to do if you don't have the right tool for the job because you strip one of these out and as much torque as it took me to get these off, you could be in real trouble trying to get that off and then, yeah, you've done yourself no favors. We don't promote that. Alright, so I'm going to show you how much force it's taken me just to get these to break loose. <sighs> wow, that's a lot of force right there. So I'm going to break them all loose first. Instead of taking them all out, yes, I do have this one out because I was trying to size the rest of these, but um, let's see if there's a size in this one. Well, I can tell you it's a six from Taiwan. All right, so this back one's going to be a bit interesting because you got stuff in the way. I'd like to leave all my clamps on the hose they came from for easy reassembly. So sometimes you might have to break these loose. There you go, just take it and spin it. It just comes right off. Just gonna kick that off the side here. Alright, now let's undo these. So the darker brown, I will say, goes up top, and then there's a light, I wanna say that's gray, goes on the bottom. Wow, good. Wow, that almost worked better than anything I've tried so far. Alright, so that's what you're trying to get out. Alright, and the last. Which I did already break loose and left it in there, so it makes it easy. Alright, as you see it's starting to come down. Alright, I'm going to take off the throttle and cruise control link, or cable for now. Just to see if it'll free me up just a little bit more room so I can squeeze everything past that. One thing I like about Nissan is, you know, they do stuff a little bit different. But the one I put the motor in, you know, really wasn't too much different than, you know, American stuff. Yeah, you know, there's there's some stuff that's a little different. I'm going to take our gasket off because it looks like it's okay. I might actually clean it up a little bit. But this looks like a piece of metal. 
So that is definitely what's known as a reusable gasket. So we'll clean it up and reuse it. Other than that, everything else looks pretty good. I might actually wipe that out, but for 98,000 miles, I gotta say, they know how to burn fuel right. Okay, one more wire I am gonna disconnect is gonna be, it should be the idle air control motor on this. I don't know if this one's gonna be quite so nice to give it up like the other smaller ones were. It should be enough to wiggle it, so. What I might actually do is open up the throttle plates and, wow, voila, we got room. Not much, but sometimes that's all you get, that's all you got. All right, so let's go ahead and do our first one since we've made some good room. I'm going to give this one a five just because of the fact you, you got to have some tools. This is not for the average DIY guy. I've been working on cars for 20 years and you know this is a good challenge don't get me wrong but this could be a little much for those just starting out but watch the video a couple times and you know you'd be proud of yourself knowing you've done a hard job. A job that people had to go to school for. Hey there's something. It's a turn and twist, and oh, that one's a little bit wider. That must be the hot side of the motor, must be in front. Yeah, these two upper cylinders, or front cylinders, are definitely the hot ones. And that sound is why you want to do it cold. There you go. I can hear the WD-40 actually doing its job. Yeah, this one's got a lot of resistance on it. There's our gym. Yeah. I mean, the engine's running great, but that plug is definitely wore out. Put them in your installer tool. Start them by hand. Again, if you wiggle it around, you'll feel a rough spot. Just keep moving the extension until you find the sweet spot where there's very little resistance. And eventually you run it down, and it stops by hand, then do your final torque. Again, we're doing these first pass of 14, and a final pass of 18. Alright, you see that one stop by hand? And do not, do not over torque these. If you don't have a torque wrench, do your best to feel for... 18 pounds, which is about a, I would probably say no more than a half turn past the stop by hand point. Because you'll actually feel that washer on the spark plug collapse a little bit like it's supposed to. But that's your, like your ceiling ring. Ooh, already at 14. Alright, I just want to make sure it's consistent so it's the same all the way around. Alright, sounds good. Oh, there's a little bit more room on this side to actually hold the bolt all the way down. There's no magnet tool needed on this side. And again, about 10 and 12 pounds of torque. This one, just do by hand. Now what I like to do on these that are 10 and 12 pounds, you see where my hand is. I'll literally take it and go like that. More torque here means you're going to put more torque down here. And this is where you just want 10 to 12 pounds. And that's it. I'm not out here. I'm right here. And that will give you your best 10 to 12 pounds. Okay. Plug our coil back in. Alright. Wait for our snap. Yeah, this one's going to be a little fun, I can tell. I think at this point I'm going to remove the dipstick. Be careful not to get anything down and dirty in there. Well, these back ones are interesting to get off. Okay, so the back coil is off, not the one we we're trying to work on, but I guess that's okay. We've got to make some room so we can unplug it. Get that one out of the way. Alright, 
so that did work. Make sure you don't confuse the back and the front. The black one goes in the back. The gray one goes for our full. Alright, look there's enough room I can get my hands in there and grab my bolt. Alright, let's pull our coil. Now let's see if we can sneak it past. I'm going to have to take it off our little post here. There is water ran through here is the reason why I'm not disconnecting it. So if you have to sit here and wrestle it for a little bit, that's worth it without having to redo your water. Ah, look at that. He's out. Now let's put our throttle body back on our stand. And let's pull our plug. So let's sneak past. It might be a little interesting to do, but it shouldn't be too bad if we can get down in there. Ooh, that one's good. Uh-oh, more WD-40. Some of these came out and didn't need it. Some of them do. This one is one that does. When I hear that, I just go real slow. Whoa. Between number one and number four, I don't know which one made the worst divorce sound. There we go. Sometimes it's breaking the carbon on the other end. Well, look at that, folks. Let's see what the fight was all about. You can see where the WD-40 actually got right down and broke this line up. This is what was making most of the noise, is breaking that off. Yeah, this plug was not in good shape at all. That would definitely explain for high trim numbers. Okay, on this one, I'm going to use a more liberal coat of anti-seize just because it was a little bit more of a fight coming out than I like. That's going to happen. You got 100,000 miles of original plugs and 12 years of heat cycles. It's not going to give it up too easy. So, all right. So be very careful when you're getting this one sneak past the throttle body. One thing I like with anti seize is it gives you a little bit of uh, lubrication too as you're seating a very delicate part. You know, as far as I'm concerned, aluminum heads are delicate. Sometimes you got to wiggle it just to get past a minor hard spot and make sure it's not a cross thread. There's a difference. Minor hard spot will go smooth as soon as you shake it, cross thread won't. I always run these down by hand so you don't make that cross thread because you do not want to cross thread aluminum. It is not forgiving like steel. First pass, 14. Normally I don't use a torque wrench when it comes to spark plugs, but being, you know, that this vehicle, when it was new, was $41,000. I respect that. Though we didn't pay nearly that. Still, take care of a car. This car will last almost 300,000 miles, so they say. That wasn't a very strong 14. Oh, I got a little bit more extension on it. Okay, that's why I'm feeling that. Now, as you can tell, I'm not hearing that strong sound like I was hearing on the other side. Just because I'm using one more extension, I lose a little bit of sound. And there's just no way not to. So I'm going to give it a little extra, but not too much more than that. So as you can see, I'm holding it. Now I'm getting a real strong and a little bit of kickback. So we definitely hit our 18 pounds. All right, let's reinstall our coil pack. All right, let's sneak this past this mess again. Let's see if I can't come in on the back side of it though. Uh, just a little bit more. There we go. Now if we can spin it, be good. All right, very good. And then let's put our balloon. And yeah, I'll try to get the best shot we can, but sometimes these shots are difficult. Now I'm going to hold on to the throttle body and then just torque this again, like I said, about 10 to 12 pounds. 
Alright, now torque it. Alright, now at this point we're going to reinstall our throttle body because it's not in our way to get our, to our back one. Stay tuned for part three as we finish the E3 spark plug service and do the first test drive after E3 spark plug installation.